Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on some flower bed maintenance behind the chicken coop and it is a complete overgrown giant mess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. Like what is even in there? I can't even, hardly tell anymore. And there is a pallet walkway under there. You can kind of see it curving out, but the borage has completely overtaken it. The wisteria here is growing into the maple tree at the moment. We just have a wild, a wildness going on. This area is going to see some changes. I mean, I thought that we would have the area behind the Hartley planted by now, and you can see that we do not. Um, and I'm actually a little bit glad that things moved slow. I'm always happy when things move slower than I'm, I hope for in the beginning because we have changed our mind on the front of the Hartley, how we're going to landscape that. It's actually going to be a lot more simple than I was going to attempt to do in the beginning. And I think that in the end, I will be thankful for that. Um, I kind of want the Hartley itself to shine from our view from the house instead of having you know too much going on in front of it because we already have a lot of flower beds around that grassy area so we'll be tackling that here soon we do have a little bit more grading work to do back here we thought we were done but we've got a little bit of a dip somewhere where we don't need it anyway all that said i kind of left this area alone because i thought we were going to be getting to it sooner and maybe i shouldn't have hey douglas i see you've joined us russell is <laughs> hey buddy what are you doing under there? Hi. So what we're going to be doing in the end, I'm just going to rebuild the pallet walkway because the pallet uh, pieces, the you know, the boards have been down for years at this point. They got completely covered over with dirt when, uh, you know, there was machinery back in here for the most part, like from right here all the way to about where the board stops there. Um, so yeah, I, I just feel like because we have to redirect it anyway, so it's going to still come around. It's going to come underneath the arbor. It's gonna grow around this way. And then instead of curving right here, it's gonna go actually right through where the geranium is here. Um, so that's something I'll need to move later on. I'm gonna be cutting that back today. Um, so this whole garden bed, not the whole thing, but this whole section will change completely. Um, and we've got, so we've got perennial cut back to do. We've got some grooming to do, just that's a basket of gold alyssum right there. We're just gonna clean that side up. So this right here is a boom chocolata geranium. It's massive. Now there are some blooms still popping up, but a lot of them are spent. Here you can see they are done. So we need to do a shear back so that it can grow again and bloom later on in the season. And it's funny because this geranium is supposed to top out at two feet, two inches. So that's 26 inches. I brought a tape measure out this morning, right here. Brought this tape measure out because I thought there's no way this is just two feet, two inches. 41 inches, <laughs> 41 inches in this spot. I was not expecting it to get this big, so it's a good thing that I need to move it uh, because it's clearly not the right plant to put right at the edge of a border. Yeah, see that? Just above 41 inches, barely. When we redirect, we're gonna likely move the fountain somewhere else. Uh, it's not on a proper base anyway. Uh, we're just keeping it filled and it's running and looking pretty. Uh, we are gonna deal with some chlorosis this morning as well. So that's what this is doing. This is a crab apple tree. This is a sergeant crab apple, like the one we just planted out in the South Garden. Um, when you see dark green veining with yellow leaf tissue, that oftentimes means they're not getting enough iron. And our soil, like the iron might be there, but our soil is so high pH that it binds the nutrients up and it, it makes it in a way that the tree can't take it up quickly and easily. So we're gonna give it some chelated iron today as well as the baptisia. So baptisia is growing beautifully, which is surprising to me with it being so chlorotic. Um, yeah, they're supposed to be a dark green and it's bright yellow. They still bloomed. This is, I think, the pink lemonade variety. So like pink and yellow, beautiful. Uh, anyway, we're going to treat those. We've got some gorgeous hibiscus that we planted here a couple seasons ago. They're massive. <laughs> they're so big. October glory maple. We need to just rogue out the borage. I mean, I planted three, I think three, four inch plants in this spot, in the spot right here and they have seeded themselves and just carried on all over in this area. And so I feel like just roguing it out because they'll probably still pop up in this space. We're gonna clean this rose back. See how it's got canes coming clear out to the walkway. Just a huge mess, my goodness gracious. Also right around this area, I did go ahead and plant some annuals in here. I've got Play in the Blue Salvia in the back. There's a White Wands Veronica. There's only one that came back. I think they may have dried out. The drift system was cut off to this area for a while this spring while things were being done around the Hartley. So that's the only difference, 
you know, versus the other years that we've had it here and I've never had a problem with it returning. Um, so anyway, it's totally fine because we're changing everything anyway, but I ended up with some pretty annuals in here. Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, you know, it's kind of harsh lighting right now. This would be a much better project to show you in the afternoon when all of this is in the shade, but we've got the Beyond Midnight Sweet Potato Vine Jazzberry. There's the new Heliotrope Augusta Lavender looking really pretty, even though it's been in the hundreds. Uh, play in the blue salvia, and then there's a huge drift of skyrocket penicetum in the back there. We're gonna do a little bit, I've got some foxgloves, I need to cut back a little bit of maintenance here. Not much. Anyway, this, this flower bed where the brick ends is actually going to extend out right here. So the flower bed will not be shaped this way anymore in a while. Here's the iron we're gonna be using this morning. That's what it looks like. You only have to use like a teaspoon per plant in a bucket of water and mix it up and pour it around the base. That's all we're gonna be doing. It's important that it's EDDHA. That's the best kind of chelated iron for the plants. All right, so I'm just gonna get after it. I, I think it's gonna be somewhat satisfying. It's still not gonna look like super great because I'm not gonna mulch or anything. And um, I'm just wanting to clean up the overgrownness of the area. Yeah, that would be satisfying. Okay, let's do it. One is complete. I got the wisteria kind of under control. I got it out of the branches here in the tree. It was all twisted around the staking system and the sunflowers. It was also all up in the plants over here. So I got most of that managed and under control. I cut back salvia underneath the snow fountains cherry and kind of trimmed that up and got it managed a bit. It had some wild branches going up top. All the borage, I cut a few of them back. Uh, but most of them I just pulled because they will come back. Even if I pull them, they, they, they are in this area for now, unless I just kept pulling and kept pulling until I in, you know, finally eradicated them. Um, I do have some Brennera in this space. These two, I did not realize were still here. They've survived full sun. Like they're just sitting out here, not protected by a thing. They're all dusty right now, I'll hose them off. But I am really, I think this is a silver heart variety. I am really impressed with their ability to withstand it. That one right there just seeded itself and it got a little bit, um, it was covered by the borage, so it doesn't look as good as these over here. Uh, but I do plan on digging these up and moving them once it's not so hot. But this area, I mean, the borage was just out of control. Um, oak leaf hydrangea in there had a few little leaves. I just cut it back, we'll see, because the leaves would burn. They haven't been exposed to sun at all up to this point. It struggled in this space anyway. I'll probably put some else in there. I got the rose under control, trimmed up the, um, crab apple a little bit. Now the iris I do plan on moving as well because it's a little too tall for the crab apple here. It kind of masks the, the structure of it, but at least everything's tidied. The suckers were cut. Lamb's ears looking good, just a little dusty until I hose it off. Uh, Baptisia is the same. Cut back the geranium. I know that looks so severe because it was such a huge, really pretty plant. You know, it just, 
needs a recharge. So we cut them back like this and they will soon flush back. Um, basket of gold just cleaned up that edge there. So everything's looking really nice. The next thing we're gonna do is do our chelated iron. I'm gonna go through with plantone first though because this is the dry thing. So I'll sprinkle this around everything in the bed and kind of scratch it in with the rake. And then we'll go through and do the chelated iron on the few things that need it. And then I'll hose everything down. And then I think I am gonna bring just a little bit of mulch out here just to do this side of the bed. Cause I think even though we plan on changing it, it won't be for a while. And I think it'll make it look really nice. So much better and it only took about an hour and a half look at this so much better i mean there's still work yet to be done like i feel like this space needs some breathing room the iris needs to go um, that sort of thing the the geraniums need to go somewhere else so we'll be reworking this bed but i'm glad i just went ahead with the light layer of mulch because that just tidies things up a lot i didn't even go all the way just about to the fountain there because even though we'll probably be moving the fountain or shifting it or just moving it out long enough to put a proper base down i do think we'll try to tip it a bit and level it up just so it's level for the the you know remaining time it has in that space um, and then of course i didn't do anything on this side of the bed um, just kind of tried to rake some of the soil away from the pallets and then i was able to blow off a lot of the soil and then hose them off and they look so much better oh my goodness oh let me show you from this side look at that oh like you couldn't see any of that dimension it just looked like a big blob before we got started my goodness I should have done that a long time ago. And in the end, I did treat several things with the chelated iron. The snow fountain's cherry here because it's got a little bit of that chlorosis sign right there. I did do a little bit on the zephyrin rose because you can see those right there. The crab apple got it. The maple got it. The maple looks pretty good. And I know Aaron treated it earlier this season, but you can see the new growth, how it's more yellow. Typically it's lighter in color anyway, but if you look further down, so like the new growth here, it's got that kind of orangey color, but look at these. And maples tend to get chlorosis in our area. So, so long as we keep up with chelated iron, they're awesome trees. And then of course I did the Baptisia, which there are four, you can't really tell. But there's one there, one there, and then there's two uh, kind of behind them. Yeah, I am really happy with this. So I do know how this whole area is going to evolve now. You can see Benny is here. They're actually working on several things today. Oh, and our neighbor's riding her horse over there. It's the prettiest thing. Oh, they're working on tying in the drip zones finally. We've been running all of the drip zones around this area, including the chicken coop, uh, by turning the solenoid down in the box, right? That's what they're called, right? It's like a little valve. Uh, we have to turn that on every day and then remember to turn it off. So they're getting that all tied into our actual irrigation system so they'll go off automatically. Thank the Lord. Uh, it's just one less thing to think about. And then they're also trenching in the orchard right now to run our orchard water so that we can start seeding grass, probably wait a little while to do that, let it cool off a tiny bit, but we'll seed grass and I've got a bunch more bulbs coming to put in there. So that's really exciting. Uh, but just getting these little areas kind of buttoned up make me feel, especially in this spot right here, it makes me feel better about this spot um, just because I'm so anxious to get going and get some order over here and get some structure over here and cover up this powder dirt. This, I don't think I'll ever be rid of powder dirt. We'll always have some of it exposed somewhere, some for something. And the chickens were really interested in what was going on too. I don't know where they're at now. I've been giving them frozen fruit every day during all of this heat. Oh, they must be up. They kind of egg lay in time. Oh, there's one. Hi chicken. 
I don't have any treats with me currently. So anyway, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Just a little cleanup, tidying, fertilizing. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. I did go through and treat with Plantone, um, just kind of for a mid-season pick-me-up, especially on those perennials that you cut back and you want them to reflush and bloom again. It's always a good idea to add a little bit of nutrients around the plant just to help recharge them so that they perform really well later on in the season. But everything got it in this bed, minus the annuals today. Uh, we fertilize the annuals weekly with a water soluble. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.